Hello, everybody, and welcome to WisconsinPrepZone.com and our Week 7, that's right, Week 7 Prep Rally. I'm Rob Hernandez, joined by Dennis Semrau of the State Journal. And Dennis, uh, before we get to the uh, games this week, and we're at New Glarus, a beautiful new press box behind us, uh, we've got to look uh, back at last week. Uh, week 6 was something to behold. Uh, just a lot of high-scoring craziness all over the area, all over the state. Well, I'm up at Reedsburg, 10-3 to 3 in the fourth quarter. Then I get some tweets. 84-82 to 82, Oconomowoc over Wisconsin Lutheran. Wow, I heard both uh, defensive coordinators had uh, a little uh, detention after that game uh, in their schools. Uh, you look at uh, 70 points from Onor Barneveld right. after being shut out by DeForest. And uh, Darlington, 71 points. I mean, I've been asked the last few weeks, how, how about the offenses? I think, first of all, passing leagues in the summer yep. and the spread, and there's so many complications now in offense. Defensive coordinators, you wonder how much time they have to prepare for that. And also, our team's putting more athletes on the offensive side than on defense if they are indeed two platooning, which a lot of the bigger schools are. Well, and I maintain too, Dennis, that uh, I mean, it's another beautiful day here as we tape Perf Alley down in New Glarus, but uh, uh, it's been very great weather, very good weather throughout the season. I mean, uh, last Friday night I thought it was ideal for scoring, and uh, and then Saturday did the Potosi Blackhawk game, and wind was a factor, rain was a factor. We've avoided the bad weather, the challenging weather for football games on Friday night. Well, you can pass the ball all you want, but you better be able to run it in October and November, and we're getting close. We're getting close indeed. Not only high scoring games, Dennis, last week, but uh, Wanakee struggles to beat Sauk Prairie uh, in overtime. You had a great back and forth ball game between uh, Verona and Middleton. And then, of course, the one that uh, I think Nick Sutherland said he just got back from uh, Sun Prairie uh, at M Madison Memorial, a shootout that goes until about 11 15, 11 30. That's almost a four hour game. I mean, it was late, it was crazy, but it was some good football. 52 42, Derice Fountain, four touchdown receptions, 177 yards. Well, sounds a little bit like uh, Everdaris for the Badgers on Saturday. And a kickoff return, 99 yards. Why do you even put the ball near him <laughs> if he's open? Uh, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, Toman had a great game with six touchdown passes. We're not sure in the yardage. Uh, was it over 600? Was it under 500? He needed a calculator to keep track no matter what game you were at. We had him for 655, which if it uh, is verified, would be a state record for Brandon Toman, the quarterback of the Memorial Spartans. Dennis, let's get to this week. Let's start here in New Glarus, Capital Conference South. Obviously, the Capital Conference, one of the several 16 conferences we have in the area. Uh, late getting started with conference play, but through two weeks, three unbeaten teams, Cambridge, Marshall, and New Glarus Monticello. Marshall and New Glarus Monticello here in New Glarus, Friday night at 7 o'clock, will uh, knock one of those teams from the ranks of the unbeatens. Yeah, Marshall's uh, played a pretty good schedule, 5-1 and one overall. Um, you look at 3-3 uh, three and three for New Glarus Monticello, they had a tough Darlington team that they got smoked on early, but bounced back from that. As you said, 2-0 oh in conference play. Finally, we had to wait for the capital, the last conference to get going, and uh, well worth the wait. Well, and uh, New Glarus Monticello not only lost to, to Darlington, but then lost to a very good Iowa Grant team, and then almost knocked off Wisconsin Lutheran, had that game, I'm sorry, Lakeside Lutheran, had that game in hand in the fourth quarter, but Lakeside rallied to win, and they've won every game since then. Their ground game, Dennis, very punishing at this point uh, through three wins. What do you see in terms of the matchup with Marshall? How are the Cardinals going to be able to stop uh, New Glarus Monticello? And conversely, what does Mo New Glarus Monticello have to do to shut down the perennial favorites in the Marshall Cardinals? This, this is going to be a turnover game, I think. If you can hang on to the football, and uh, when you want to run it, there's a lot of contact. Last week, I had five turnovers for the Forest, and a couple of them were on second effort, guy carrying three and four. Mm -hmm. That extra yard, they punched the ball out. Ball, ball security, that's going to be number one for both teams. Well, that's the big game in the Capital South uh, that all eyes will be on Friday night again. Marshall and uh, New Glarus Monticello. Dennis, quickly moving to the Big 8 Conference. Uh, it seems like this is a, a, a replay of every week, but Sun Prairie now involved again in another uh, showdown game. A team that kind of flew under the radar for a while because they lost early, but uh, the Middleton Football Cardinals, after beating Verona last week in that shootout, uh, now going to Sun Prairie for the, uh, the, the showdown game between the two Cardinals, Sun Prairie-Middleton. And uh, if Sun Prairie wins this one, they are clearly in the driver's seat uh, for the conference title. Well, just give the ball to the, the ball to the big guy, Craig Evans. Two yeah. rushing touchdowns last week to help uh, Sun Prairie pull that one out, uh, even though they gave up 42 points. Middleton, they lost week one to Memorial, but ever since they've gotten a little bit better and a little bit better. They started out with a two-quarterback system. Luke Schaefer had a back injury. Casey Miller has taken over, just done an outstanding job. They're both great baseball players as well. And uh, Miller has taken the, the reins at quarterback. The defense has gotten better for Middleton. They still had to hold off a tough you know, Verona. But 
look at it, Verona and Parker, two and four teams. Yeah. Perennial playoffs. Whoever loses is out of the playoffs. That's right. Homecoming in Verona this week, and it's a must-win game for the Wildcats. Must-win game, as Dennis said, for both teams. So a lot to look at there in the Big Eight. Uh, the dust has kind of settled, at least for a week in the Badger Conference. Uh, Reedsburg, the team that's now the surprise of the North and in first place, ahead of Mount Hora Barnabelt, ahead of DeForest, and of course ahead of Wanakee. Uh, they're uh, in a non-conference bye with Milton this week, so we don't really have to worry too much about what's going on up there. I think the Sauk Prairie DeForest game will be very interesting. And then in the South, Monona Grove, uh, with the win over Fort Atkinson last week in decisive fashion, uh, they now have a one-game lead on Edgewood. They've beaten all the teams they needed to beat. So right now, the, the Badger Conference is starting to crystallize. Yeah, uh, MG's got Stoughton. I just have to make sure that I don't slip up there. Uh, but as convincingly as they played the last two weeks, we got to uh, spend some time with Jaden Galt on, on Friday, yep. who's going to be playing in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. And he went out. He was very worried about that game with all the distractions coming in. And they were focused and took control 35-7 to over a very good Fort Atkinson team. So MG is definitely, I think, worthy of a top-10 vote, and they were on my poll this week. Well, definitely. Uh, a couple games of note out in the area. Rock Valley has crossover games this week. Broadhead, Judah, Jefferson, uh, two uh, teams uh, that are very much in the thick of their conference races uh, going head-to-head, uh, -head, but uh, the game doesn't count to the, for the south. It does for the north. Jefferson wanted to keep pace there uh, and stay one game behind Edgerton. Dennis, uh, another Saturday ball game involving Blackhawk. That'll be huge. The Warriors made a statement on Saturday uh, handling Potosi 46-8, and uh, they now will go to Argyle for the second of two Peck Argyle home Cummings. That game Saturday at 2 in Argyle, the Peck Argyle Vikings clinched a playoff berth last week as did Blackhawk with the win, but now another showdown game in the Six Rivers. Yeah, after the last couple of weeks, uh, th this week's a little uh, quieter overall. So uh, we'll start looking at conferences like the Six Rivers and the Capitol. And uh, in the Swall Conference on Friday, uh, Mineral Point, I'm sorry, Darlington uh, going to Cuba City in a showdown game. Uh, a lot of people thought that uh, Cuba City, after losing to Iowa Grant early, might not be as tough as, uh, as they have been the last few years when they've been near the, or at the top of the conference. But Darlington's going to have to win that game to set up a special game next week. Yeah, boy, if you scored 71 points, how do you top that? That. Yeah, definitely. So a lot to look forward to. Our live blog last week was uh, just a buzz with all these uh, games. First of all, going uh, you know down to the wire in some cases, uh, lighting up the scoreboard in other cases. But uh, we thank you guys out there in, uh, uh, on Madison.com, WisconsinPrepZone.com for chiming in with scores from your games. We'll continue to have the live blog up and running this week with uh, scores, highlights, and, uh, and insights from around the area throughout the state. Again, that's on WisconsinPrepZone.com. For Dennis Semrau, I'm Rob Hernandez here in New Glarus. Thanks for watching Prep Rally. We'll see you at the stadium.